roughly a decade on. The second part of the book initially focuses on the fate of Erasmus. Having recovered from bankruptcy and the shame of his father's death, he has married into a wealthy family. His wife Margaret is the daughter of a wealthy man, Sir Hugo, president of the West India Association. Their marriage is clearly one of mere convenience. It seems sure that the Liverpool merchant has been lost at sea in bad weather. However, Kemp soon learns from another captain that the ship is beached on the southeastern coast of Florida. In the Americas, the ship's crew and slaves are said to be living together in a small inland settlement. Trading with the local Indians. Seeking retribution against his cousin. Kemp takes a ship to Florida. In St. Augustine he manages to obtain a small force of infantry equipped with cannon to capture the crew. The ship's crew and slaves have been living together in a community for over a decade. Speaking a trade pigeon from the Guinea coast the few women are shared among the men. Many of which now have children. Paris has a son with a woman named Tabakali. Who he shares with another man. The small community live in a primitive fashion. Having a simple anarchist socialist political system. Life is peaceful in general though. Even utopian. The translator tells the children stories in a pigeon tongue which they all share. While Paris reads to them from Alexander Pope and David Hume. Uddharan Chin. Erasmus finds Paris, journal among the wreckage of the merchant. His cousin writings clashing with his strongly capitalist convictions and further whetting his appetite for retribution. Erasmus, hatred for his cousin stems from his childhood. When Matthew had forcefully lifted him away when he was trying to dumb a river with his party of fifty, he finds the settlement. Some are shot, the rest being taken to St. Augustine by ship. He intends to sell the slaves as his father's property and have the crew hanged for murdering Thurso. He particularly looks forward to the hanging of his cousin Paris, whose leg wound appears minor. But the trauma of the gunshot has triggered, some occlusion of the blood, a pulmonary embolism, that Paris recognizes as fatal. Paris dies before the ship can reach St. Augustine. And Erasmus comes to the realization that Paris did not lift him clear of the dumb to cheat him off victory, but to save him from defeat.